mama, I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of the law. Hello and welcome to the Steel Regime. Lawman is putting in to my running and I'm so far from my home. I am your host, Brandon Sweeney, and this is your weekly dose of news and opinions on your Pittsburgh Steelers. From Franco and Mean Joe to Big Ben and Debo, we will talk about it all right here on The Steel Regime. We are heading into the end of May now and the Steelers are rolling into OTAs. Rookie minicamp is now in the rearview mirror. And these players now have their playbooks, and it's time to get to work. You can just smell training camp, can't you? St. Vincent College will be the place to be when the end of July rolls around. It will be electric. You can count on that. But let's not try to get too ahead of ourselves here. Let's talk about the news circulating the Steelers right now. There's something special about this draft class, isn't there? I know it's early. I know it's only football and shorts. But even head coach Mike Tomlin said he liked the energy that these guys were bringing in rookie minicamp. You just know these guys are high-character, team-oriented guys. And this potentially, in this class potentially, can be Kevin Colbert's best draft class. I know that's a bold prediction. I know we haven't really seen much yet from these guys. But when you have a guy like T.J. Watt that you picked in your first round, who I believe has the potential to step in and be the week one starter against the Cleveland Browns. As long as as Watt shows he can be a disruptor and he can grasp his assignments on defense through camp in the preseason, I think Watt has a good shot at starting week one. I don't think that's a popular opinion. I think most Steeler fans will probably say James Harrison is the week one starter, and you might be right. I know rookie linebackers in this defense often don't get starts right out of the gate, but you have to look at the opportunity here for Watts. Going against a Pro Bowl and arguably Hall of Fame left tackle in Week 1 in Joe Thomas in a game the Steelers should be heavily favored, barring some substantial injuries. I think you have to look at the opportunity for Watts. I think it's a low-risk, high-reward type opportunity for the Steelers and Watts throughout the season. Again, it's kind of getting ahead of myself there, but it just kind of speaks to the confidence and how much I like T.J. Watt, and it preserves James Harrison, and and I think a lot of people would agree that Harrison is best along that stretch, the end of November going into December and January, hopefully into February this season. Uh, So it preserves James Harrison, and that's why I push for Watt to be the starter. Juju Smith-Schuster was the team's second-round pick who seems to be determined at his young age. I did see Antonio Brown with Juju Smith-Schuster at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. Brown posted a picture of that on his Instagram this past week. I think the more time Smith-Schuster spends with AB and takes notes on AB on the field, I think that's only a good thing. I don't think if I had a wide receiver, a young wide receiver, I would want him to take notes on AB over any wide receiver in the league um, on the field, of course, um, because there, there isn't many wide receivers that work harder uh, than, than Antonio Brown. And I, I like the role that AB seems to be taking, being that leader, knowing he's the, the veteran and the leader of that wide receiver group, a lot like Hines Ward did back when he had when he realized he was the veteran of his wide receiver group. Cam Sutton was the team's third round pick out of Tennessee. He's a cornerback that brings that mirroring ability the Steelers lacked in that AFC championship game against the New England Patriots. Started every game in college and high school minus injury. James Conner was that compensatory pick in the third round. When you see James Conner, he just looks like a Pittsburgh Steeler, doesn't he? I think we all like that pick, a guy that punishes defenders. He's capable of backing up Le'Veon Bell, in my opinion. Potentially your short yardage back as well. 
I think they pick up two very good project players later in the draft and Brian Allen, the cornerback from Houston, and Keon Adams, the seventh-round linebacker from Western Michigan. Going back to Allen, he's long at six foot three. Uh, he used to be a wide receiver, but he converted over to cornerback, kind of that Richard Sherman type build on him. A guy that you'd like to see defensive backs coach Carnell Lake transform into a great player. Uh, I think the Steelers could benefit off that type of body type and that defense. I don't know. I don't know. But I really like this class, and I think it's special. The Pittsburgh Steelers have been busy since the draft. The team is in process of signing their draft picks, and with Juju Smith-Schuster signing on Wednesday, five of the team's eight draft picks are now under contract. On Thursday, the Steelers decided to part ways with a couple players, longtime long snapper Greg Warren and not-so-long-time tight end Ladarius Green. Green has been made to be the bigger story of the two, um, and we will get to, to Green, but I just want to make sure Greg Warren gets his due because for 12 seasons, he was the man at long snapper. The Steelers have shuffled through a number of kickers and punters through, the, through that time, but Greg Warren was always the man. He was one of three players remaining on the roster from that iconic Super Bowl 40 victory in Detroit, Michigan. And I think he's a guy that will be sorely missed. Warren was released because of a failed physical, which I guess makes a lot more sense of that Colin Holba pick in the sixth round, a pick that was after it was made. Steeler fans were left kind of scratching their heads a little bit. The other player that failed his physical was Ladarius Green, a guy that probably won't be missed as much as Greg Warren because he signed a four-year deal for $20 million in 2016, and the Steelers got just six games from him. He was released because of a failed physical, like I said. He's already been titled the worst free agent signing in Pittsburgh Steelers history. I think you rooted for a guy like Ladarius Green. Am I right? I think you rooted for him because you've seen the potential that he had. He, he had the potential to stretch the field. He could stretch the field for Ben Roethlisberger and, but it was obvious that there were some real problems when it came to concussions because of this transaction it leaves perhaps the one flaw in this potent Steelers offense what will the Steelers do will they look into free agency to maybe fill this void and if you look at the market the one name that pops out to you is Gary Barnage who was a pro bowler just two years ago with the Cleveland Browns had a fantastic season with the Browns. Last year's production slipped, but when you look at the Browns last year, you notice that they shuffled quarterbacks week by week, almost at least. Or do they stay in-house with the guys they have? Jesse James and Xavier Grimble are the guys that are returning that were on the roster last year. Scott Orndoff is an undrafted free agent from Pitt. Faison Odom, who just landed a contract with the team after a tryout, he's six foot eight, six foot eight, and two hundred and fifty-one pounds. Just a massive, massive man. I don't know. I mean, these guys are obviously not a finished project by any means yet. But will they be that security blanket that Ben Roethlisberger needs going into the two thousand seventeen season? Right now, I think this is Jesse James's job to lose, but it'll be interesting to see what the Steelers will do in the weeks to come. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. Let's go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk some position battles and OTAs and heading into training camp, and we will wrap it up. You are listening to The Steel Regime.
Phase 3 of the offseason program kicks off on May 22nd with OTAs. The Steelers will hold 10 workouts from the 23rd of May to June 8th. The team will break for about a month or so and start reporting to Latrobe for training camp. And like I said at the top of the show, uh, training camp is going to be fun. It's going to be a blast because there's a lot of competition. And that's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk about a couple position battles. We're only going to look at two. And like Todd Haley said, they want to add competition. They don't want guys getting comfortable. They want to keep pushing them because competition often brings out the best in people. And um, we're going to look at wide receiver first. Wide receiver, they, they, they drafted Smith-Schuster, as I mentioned earlier in the show. And if you look at the wide receiver group, I think you have Antonio Brown, Martavius Bryant, of course, if he stays, if he stays clean, and Smith-Schuster are the three locks, I think, that make this team. After that, you have Eli Rogers, Darius hayward Bay, Sammy Coach, Justin Hunter, Kobe Hamilton. Not all those guys are going to make the team. It's going to be interesting to see who does what it takes to make this team. Eli Rogers might be a guy that's on the outside looking in because of the Smith-Schuster selection. Is he going to be able to hold on to that slot position? I don't know why you would carry two slot receivers. Uh, Smith-Schuster already prides himself on going and catching the ball in the middle and not being afraid. I think he can grasp that. I think Ben will like him. Darius Hayward Bay is someone that's not as productive, maybe offensively, but praised for what he can do on special teams. So we'll see. Sammy Coates, who, who, if you remember, had a great beginning of of the 2016 season, um, got injured, one of his hands, had all kinds of problems, and, and he just wasn't able to return to his beginning of the season form. Justin Hunter, we'll see what he can do to add to the mix. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. And then if you look across uh, the ball at cornerback, directly across, you have, again, three guys that I think are locks to make the team. Cam Sutton, who they just drafted, Artie Burns, last year's first-round pick, and Ross Cockrell, I think, are your three guys. And then after that, I think it's also up in the air. You know, they drafted Brian Allen. They just signed Cody Sensible in free agency. Will Gay. A lot of people think Will Gay is on the outside looking in. So how many cornerbacks will the Steelers keep this season? We definitely want to hear what uh, what you have to what you have to say. Who do you think is going to make this team? What is your bold prediction as far as that is concerned? It's going to be interesting. I cannot wait till Cam comes. And I want to thank you guys for for listening to the first Steel Regime show. This is a show that you can look out for on a weekly basis on social media and YouTube. It's been fun. It's been fun. And again, I can't wait to do it again next week. Again, my name is Brandon Sweeney, and you have been listening to The Steel Regime. Those of you guys that have been here, you know that's how we do it. We pick each other up, offense, defense, special teams. Young guys that just got here, that's how we do it. Sir, we pick each other up. We play football like we're Steelers, like we are a team. Sir. We're a team on three. One, two, three, team.